All right, Shalom. I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit, and peace and blessings unto the elect of the nation of Israel. This is the brother Abadia from the GMS Houston camp, and I'm back with another video. And Lord willing, it's edifying. And I'm going to be going into the book of Second Edris, the ninth chapter. Starting at the first verse, but the focus point for this uh, video is going to be verses 6, 7, and 8. Okay, though this whole chapter is beautiful, okay, you know, uh, in the previous verses before I get to, you know, verses uh, 6, 7, and 8 are very important and relevant to the times. I really, I'm really going to key in on verses 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so let's get it in. This is second address nine and one. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And what does the scripture tell us in Romans 15 and 4? It tells us the, th the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay, that we through uh, faith and patience. Matter of fact, let me bring that out. Give me one second. I'm going to bring it out. I want to bring this whole verse out. Because that's not for everybody. Everybody, <clears throat> that don't apply to everybody. Everybody's not supposed to uh, learn from these scriptures. Though, you know, the ones that are supposed to get into the scriptures and uh, all the, uh, the whole Bible was written a full time, okay, we're the, the the main ones that are supposed to get into these scriptures and learn from them are the, are the prophets, the prophets of the Lord. Okay, the the elect. So even the uh, women that are trying to get themselves in order, and then you have uh, friends of the prophets. You have helps. Okay. So let's read, this is Romans 15 and 4, it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Because the scriptures give us, when we uh, apply these scriptures, learn from them, it gives us uh, faith. It helps with our faith. Okay? Now going back to 2nd Edges 9 and 1, it tells us to measure the time diligently in itself and who's supposed to do that the prophets and what and what's our uh measuring tool the prophecies we measure the time diligently by the prophecies by looking at what's going on in the earth and filtering it through the prophecies in, in the scriptures okay and the scriptures also say that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets so these are going the, the prophets that wrote these prophecies or had them written, okay, are, are now on the scene breaking them down, you know, through the reincarnation. The same prophets. I'm going to read on. It says, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, which we've seen, we've seen uh, part of the prophecies past. Right, we're waiting on the rest of the prophecies to be fulfilled. It says, Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the Most High will begin to visit the world which he made. And what is the Most High visiting the world with? He's visiting the world with judgment, he's judging the planet right now, and the, his judgments are far from over, as we're about to read. Because it says then we we're we're gonna we're finding out that he's just beginning to to judge this to really bring these end time judgments on the planet. Verse three it says, therefore when when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Also, let me read that again. Therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, which we're seeing, we're seeing earthquakes is taking place all the time. They got a site you can go to, go to, and it tracks the the earthquakes, and they're popping off in the planet, on this planet like never before, and we see the whole earth in a uproar. Everybody's rising up, 
uh, uh, speaking out. They want justice, and then people also want things to go back to normal. People are not cool with this, um, you know, things being partially shut down and all these different restrictions <clears throat> because of the, uh, the CV-19 uh, on the scene, you know? Verse 4, it says, Then thou shalt, then thou, I'm sorry, let me read that again, sorry. Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, right? Because, you know, what's happening now, the Most High already set to happen from the very beginning. Verse 5, it says, For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. So we in the time the Most High is manifesting the end. He's showing us based upon prophecy that we're in the last days. Okay. Verse six, it says, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works. The endings in effect, uh, the endings in effects and signs. So the most high was going to show the, the end of this thing, which is the end of what the end of, uh, Esau's rulership on this planet Earth, because Job nine and twenty four tells us that the Earth is given into the hand, the hands of the wicked. Right. So it's time for this the most. It's time for the Most High to put this man down. And he's putting him down, and he's showing us that his rule is um, just about up through um, effects and signs. Or in other words, the prophecies coming to pass. Verse 7, it says, And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape his works, because who's bringing all the, who's going to bring all the, uh, who's bringing and going to continue to bring uh, hell upon this earth? Ultimately, it's the Most High. It's not Esau. Or it's not by the power of Esau. It's by the power of the Most High. Yet he's using the Edomites. It says, yeah, everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape his works, the works of the Most High, and which is, this is the elect, okay, the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be saved. It says, and, I'm sorry, and by faith whereby ye have believed. Because what's going to save us? Our faith, which uh, the elect of Israel that's that's uh, allotted allotted for salvation it was um uh, set from the foundation of the earth all right and those are going to be the ones that display the faith in the earth verse um eight it says where i'm gonna read, I'm gonna read the last part of verse seven it says whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land. See, this is the elect. This is the time that we're approaching. Yeah, we are uh, in the time or approaching the time of Jacob's trouble. We've seen a glimpse of it, but it, it hadn't really just hit. And the time of all out hell breaking loose on this planet Earth. According to Daniel, the, the 12th chapter, a time like never before since man been on this planet. Okay. And uh, uh, what's going to happen right before the, 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 the last and final uh, Trump, which is the nuclear destruction that's going to take place in, the, in a, on America, Babylon the Great, is going to be what we're reading, salvation for the elect of Israel. Those are going to be the ones that escape all the, the perils, all the different destructions and judgments of the Most High. So the elect has nothing to worry about. Okay. All the elect has to do well, the elect don't have to do nothing because the uh, uh, but be the elect. And what the elect is going to show, because they are, they are the, of the elect, 
is obedience to the Heavenly Father uh, and it's based upon faith. Doing what these scriptures say because we believe, we believe in them. And uh, putting our emotions to the side and putting our life to the side and dealing with the reality of the, of the scriptures. I'm going to finish verse 8 and I'm going to sign out. It says, uh, and within my borders, and that's another thing, we're looking to go back home, which is really that's going to be our headquarters. The headquarters, and we're going to all have a, our inheritance right to the the most special and greatest land on this planet, which is the land of uh, Israel. It says, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Meaning the most high have uh, purified us. Oh, what did Yahweh I say? Uh, he said, I think that's, let me see. I think that's St. John 17 and 7. I have sanctified them in thy truth. And let me make sure. Yes, yeah, St. John 17 and 17. I'm sorry. It says, sanctify them. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. So yeah, we've been sanctified, or in other words, pure, uh, purified, cleansed uh, through the word. And this, this, uh, this was set to happen to the to the chosen uh, men, women, and, and uh, children. Okay, ultimately, uh, really starting with the uh, the hundred and forty four thousand. Okay to be purified by this word and um that's gonna give the elect the deliverance the salvation okay so i'm gonna end it right there you know lord willing this video was edifying you know it was a uh, a way for prophecy to prophecy to get pushed out the fact that prophecy is 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 sitting at the forefront it's always said at the forefront of this book this is a prophetic book and the, and the, uh, express that the elect has nothing to worry about the elect will be delivered and that 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 should push us that much harder to uh to fight to fight the good fight of faith as uh paul said so yeah with that you know once again i want to give all praises honor and glory unto yahweh bahasham yahweh shai bahasham rakakwadash Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit, and peace and blessings unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Inshallah one.